beginner laser project number nine we're gonna make laser cut coaster holder and it will fit not only the slate coasters like this that I showed in an earlier video hold four of them it will also hold four of the laser engraved tiles which is a uh, subject of an upcoming video is we, we make a, and sell a lot of these so we're going to get into how to make this, how to get your lasers set up, how to do the graph, the uh, not really graphics, but do the cutouts, put it together, finish it, the whole caboodle coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned, this is uh, video number eight in the series on beginning laser projects. And I will be showing how to make these coaster holders out of three millimeter plywood shapes like this one here that you get at your local Dollar Tree. Uh, this is sized for three millimeter plywood. If you use a different size plywood, things aren't going to fit together well. So if you don't have a Dollar Tree around, but you do have some type of hobby store or something like that, look for three millimeter plywood. If you can get a large square of it, uh, that's great because you can cut all the shapes in one shot and not have to do it in uh, three sections like we're going to be doing here. Uh, these are buck and a quarter. And try to get ones that are flat and not warped because it will make a big difference in your cutting and assembly and finished product and the whole nine yards there. So what kind of prep you got to do with this stuff? Well, you'll need to uh, remove the little string, remove the tag on the back, which may or may not come off easy. Then you'll want to sand this before you do the cutting. The reason I say that is because it's a lot easier to do when you have a large surface like this to do the sanding on. Uh, just sand down to like 220. That, that's plenty fine if, for whatever you're going to be finishing this, whether you're going to be painting it or staining it. This is stained. There's no finish on it yet. It's just stained and glued together. So. Laser I'm going to be using for this project is a Jakota L1. Why? Because it's already set up and sitting here. I just got done doing some other projects on it. And the settings and everything I'm going to be showing here is for a 10 watt laser. If you have a 5 watt laser, you're going to have to do a little bit of experimenting and some test cuts to find out how many passes you're going to need to make. Um, I have this set up to cut in two passes. It actually will cut in one pass. But one of the things with this Dollar Tree plywood is sometimes you get a little funky thing in the grain or something there and then you'll get a piece that didn't cut all the way. And then after you snap it out and break it out and it tears the grain. And so I give it two passes, even though it doesn't really need it all the time. It's just that one time it does and you don't do it, you're going to have to be doing it over. And when you are looking for your shapes at Dollar Tree or wherever, you may see some that are substantially larger. For example, this one here, I could get all the pieces out of this one. However, this piece of plywood is two and a half millimeter thick and the little tabs won't fit together too well in there. This one here, even though it's in the same area, this is two millimeter thick. So you need to uh, look carefully. Of course, if you want to, and I don't see why you could, and I don't think anybody in the store would object, take caliper with you, measure your wood. This is 3.03 .03 millimeters thick. That's what we want to use. I'm kind of bringing this up because there are little tabs that have to fit in the little slots as you assemble this. And if your plywood is too thin, you're going to end up with a lot of slop in that hole. And it's going to be more than you can just fill with glue. Okay, this laser has air assist. And you don't have to have that. It just makes a nicer cut. It uh, cuts down on scorching. If you don't have air assist, not a big deal. This has a honeycomb board. Makes a nice cut. No scorching in the back. You have to have one? No, you don't have to have one. Uh, but when you are doing cutting, don't do it on the dining room table or your kitchen counter or any surface that could get spoiled. And always put a protective metal sheet. This is a piece of aluminum. And as you can see, it's been used before quite a few times. Put this underneath your project where you're going to be cutting because as that laser beam passes through whatever's underneath, unless it's something that won't engrave or cut like this aluminum, 
it'll go right into that other surface. So a little word of caution there, don't make the mistake of ruining the wife's good furniture. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to take you on the computer, show you how to set this up for cutting out on your shapes. Uh, the file for this, there'll be a link to it in the description where you can download it from our website. It's free, there's no charge for it. As I said though, it's made for three millimeter plywood. If you're good at altering projects and graphics and sizes of little slots, you could alter this, but that's getting to be more advanced than uh, what I'm shooting here for, for just a, a beginner project. So we'll go on the computer here and I'll show you how to get all this set up. Okay, I got light burn opened up here and I'm connected to my laser. Of course, I'm using Jakota L1 here. So we need to bring that file in. So wherever you have that stored, it will be called coaster holder. And when you open it up, it will look like this. If you have a large sheet of material, of course, you could cut all that at once. But you would not want to cut this because that's just a note I have there for to note it for a 3 millimeter plywood. So you can either delete that or just shove it over here out of the way. Now, if you're cutting off of these shapes, you're not going to be able to cut these all in one out of one shape. So you're going to have to move a few things around. Just kind of store them off to the side there. We'll start out with the bottom piece. Of course, I'm working from absolute coordinates because my laser has limit switches and I like to work that way. So what I want to do is put this in the middle of my project. That's what this little thing up here does, moves to the center of the page. Now I can set this one to cut. Again, we're at 300 millimeters per minute, 90% power. And I'm doing this in two passes just to make sure I get a good clean cut. So after this one is cut out, I can move him off to the side over here. And I can bring in one of these batches here. I'll bring in one of these. I'll get it centered. I'll cut that out. All the cuts and everything are already set up for you here. And once this one's done, it's just a repeat. You take this one here off and grab this batch and bring it on and cut it out that way if your shape is not big enough to cut all the pieces at once. You can always bring these in one at a time, for example. If you had, a, let's say you had a really nice long piece there, narrow piece, you could bring these in and you could cut them out like that. So it's whatever your piece will allow. And you can, I'll show you here, we'll do a little bit of framing to make sure that everything's lining up where we want it when we get on the laser. Yeah, I got all my pieces uh, prepped. I've got them sanded, stickers removed, and incidentally, make sure after you remove that sticker that you sand that area real good and get all that glue residue off from that sticker because if you're going to stain this and there's any of that glue residue on there the stain isn't going to penetrate it and you'll have the white streaks so something to keep in mind and as you can see here no strings attached so this is ready to get set up on the laser I'll get this set we're going to cut out the base first okay so I've got my first piece set in there and of course I'm going to frame this because I'm it's laying on a honeycomb board. I'm pretty fairly certain I'm in a good spot, and I am, because I've done a lot of these here. But you can frame your work like this and make sure that you are not going to run off an edge or get into a bad spot or anything like that. Only takes a minute to do this framing, and I, as I have mine set to frame slow at a slow speed, if I need to make adjustments, I can actually make adjustments while it's framing. So there, and also, don't forget to focus your laser uh, according to whatever brand you have. In this case, this being a Jakota, it has this little kickstand guy right here. It just folds down. That sets your focus. Of course, it's already set here for this. And then from there, just hit start. Cut time on the base piece is 3 minutes and 18 seconds, so that's not bad. Right now I'm running without air assist on, and you can see that little bit of scorching at the top. Now I'm going to turn on the air assist and I'll, you'll see what a difference it makes. So once the laser head gets out of the way and starts on the next uh, 
y-axis run there, you'll see where there where I turn the air assist on because there won't be any scorching marks. There again, you don't have to have air assist. It's just a, a nice little luxury when you're doing cutting or certain types of engraving that you won't have that scorching. And also this does create smoke. So you want to do this in a well ventilated area if you don't have your laser in an enclosure. I'm doing this out in the open because it's very difficult to shoot video inside my enclosures. But I do have a fan, I can vent the shop here. So you can see the difference there in the line between where I had the air assist on and where I didn't. And it did cut through mostly on that first pass, but again I'm doing the two passes to make sure I get good clean cuts through all the grain. And sometimes you can get them just little weird spots. If they don't cut through correctly and then you try to pull them off and you'll tear the grain and because uh, on most of these pieces you'll be able to see both sides. Of course the bottom here you could uh, put the bad side down but on your sides and ends you're going to see both sides of it. You don't want any spoiled grain. Okay so here's our first piece and you should be able to pick this up and have that just drop right out like that. So here again there's that scorch mark with no air assist and over here no scorching. And on the back, because I'm using a honeycomb board, I have no scorching. If you're uh, doing this on a flat plate, you'll have a little bit of scorching around the edges, but it does sand off. So I'll get the next piece here set up. That laid on there. And then I'll get my graphics set and cut. Here's our next set of pieces. Everything should drop right out. Incidentally, you're going to have these areas here. You can use that in other projects, so don't just pitch these. There's a lot of uh, small cutouts you can do. If you saw my uh, video on making signs, the different types of signs of cutouts, you, this is great for cutting all the middle shapes. Don't to toss them. However, you will have these little guys left over. You will need to make sure you get all cleaned off your laser bed, whether you're using a honeycomb board or not. So we'll get the next one set up here. Okay, there's our other two pieces. They should drop right out. Good clean cuts. The scraps off of there. I'm going to go back to the computer here because uh, I've just had the suggestion made by someone that's here with me. What if you can't get three millimeter plywood? What if all you can find is two millimeter? Well, let's make one up for two millimeter. Okay, I made some alterations here. Uh, this here will be for two millimeter plywood, and this will be included too if you uh, should wish to download these cut templates. So, I've got a shape here from, it's a Dollar Tree circle, and it is 11.75 inches in diameter, so I made a tool path here. So now what I'm going to do is bring in my pieces, and I've resized these to work with 2 millimeter. Ah, don't do that. So we need to get all these pieces in here. See if I can do this all in one shot. Take this, move him down here. Now these here, I could turn 90 degrees. So we can get all five pieces out of that one circle of plywood. So I'll get that set up on the laser here and we'll cut this one out too. Okay, I got my piece all laid out here and the settings now are 300 millimeters per minute, 90% power, one pass. You don't need to do two passes on uh, this two millimeter plywood. Okay, pieces are ready. Everything should drop out of there. And here's our pieces for the 2mm version. Now, some assembly required. 
Okay, if you intend to uh, stain your pieces, uh, stain them before you glue them together. It makes it a whole lot easier. That and you don't have to worry about any glue squeeze out, not absorbing stain. Um, I use oil-based stains. I suppose a water-based stain would be fine too, but what I don't like about water-based stain, especially with thin wood like this, it can, it can make it warp. So to assemble this, and of course you'll need some glue, but I'll just show you how the pieces go together. Pick out which side you want up. That fits in the end. Your other one fits on the other end. Then just simply line up the slots with the tabs. There's the three millimeter one. There's the two millimeter version, three millimeter version. So that's all there is to it and you can either leave it like it is, of course you'll need to glue it together because it will fall apart if it gets bumped wrong. I'm holding this kind of gingerly. Uh, the two millimeter version does fit together a little bit tighter than the three, but of course that may be because of the piece of plywood I have. As I'm looking at it, it's not completely uniform, but that's what you get for a buck and a quarter. You can choose to finish it any way you like. Here, this is stained with a walnut stain on it. I don't have any type of uh, polyurethane or polyacrylic or anything on it yet. I, it's just stained and glued together. As I said, I did stain this first before I glued it. You could also paint this if you wish, or as I said, you could leave it as it is. Just put a clear coat on it. Uh, you do want to put some kind of coating on it because, uh, well, it'll guard against it getting soiled or dirty, or if somebody's got wet fingers or something like that, you want to put some kind of clear finish on it if you want to leave it natural looking. So again, the uh, files for this, for both the two millimeter and the three millimeter, be a link in the description and where you can download it's no charge from our website because I like to get everybody started with their laser with some easy projects without it being overly complex and get you to understand how to use your laser. So if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.